Hey everybody. While we have decided to take the week off to enjoy the Thanksgiving holiday with our families, we decided that it would be a disservice to not put out a small video to talk about the newly released December 2022 Forbidden and Limited list. So let's go ahead and dig on into the new ban list. After getting a ban list in early October, I think that a majority of the player base assumed that we would have a ban list sometime around mid-January. While many called for an emergency ban list in reaction to the newly settled Ishizu tier tier zero format, this ban list doesn't really fill that role. In fact, it's fairly difficult to tell what role this ban list was intended to fill at all. On the surface, it seems too shallow to really impact the format. And I believe that that will largely be the case. However, I think that this ban list does exactly what it is intended to do. It will throw an interesting spin into what otherwise would have resulted in a very stale and uninteresting format in due time. But let's go ahead and review the ban list itself for those that may not have seen it. Your newly banned cards are Curious, Lightsworn Dominion, and Mystic Mine. Curious initially feels like a hit that comes entirely too late. It was a powerful card in early September as it saw a drastic rise in play in the Danger tier deck. And while I do tend to agree that this card should have been banned on the previous list, I don't think that it is out of place on the Forbidden and Limited list as a whole. Curious is an eminently powerful card that can tutor any card out of the deck. This can be used for powerful setups using Nightmare Griffin to essentially let you add any spell or trap card to your end board. Even extremely powerful spell and trap cards, such as Eradicator Epidemic Virus, for example. It can also be used for something as simple as sending a tier limit name to your graveyard, just to extend your combo. This card also saw play in another very dangerous deck in the past as well in the Danger Dark World decks from a few years ago. In what I'm assuming is an enormous coincidence, I am very much looking forward to the release of the Dark World structure decks a few days from now. It will even also include all of the Danger cards. So I'm sure that has nothing to do at all with the Curious the Lightsworn Dominion ban. Mystic Mind being banned also makes an enormous amount of sense. To be quite frank, this card is, as far as I'm concerned, one of the least fun cards that I've ever had the pleasure of not interacting with. Mystic Mind allowing you to totally lock your opponent out of activating monster effects, attacking, or generally having fun would have been right at place in 2006. But it's meta, it's in today's metagame, which revolves around the use of powerful monster effects to not only advance your immediate game state, but also to interact with your opponent in pretty much any meaningful way, this card, simply put, does not have a place. While there is a reasonable argument to be made that Mystic Mind can slow down a game state to a pace where lesser decks are allowed to compete, it can also give high-level combo decks the time they need to draw into appropriate combo pieces. This card warped the entire meta to a point where every topping duelist from any of the most recent events had to make very specific deck list choices to account for this one card. So while the card isn't highly represented and it didn't have an overwhelming win rate post side, at least in the last month or so, the impact this card had on the meta as a whole through deck building was undeniable. It was time for this card to go. A year ago. Your only newly limited card is Herald of Orange Light. At first glance, Herald might seem out of place on this list. Digging a little deeper though, I think that this hit makes quite a bit of sense. In conjunction with the Ishizu cards, Herald is potentially the most impactful it has ever been. Interacting with the Ishizu tier deck was already not an easy thing to do, and with the threat of Herald always looming, it became even more difficult to pinpoint exactly what spots were best to even attempt interaction. Even if you have a bestial to interrupt your opponent, a Herald can potentially put a quick end to that. Insulating the deck seems to have been the final straw for this card. While I don't necessarily think that this was the right time to hit Herald, that was probably last summer during Drytron format. I think that this card is a fine hit. Some decks were cutting Herald or moving it to the side already for various reasons. 
But I think that looking back on the YCS Pasadena Finals, the impact that this card can have is fairly evident. Your only semi-limited card is Lyrilisk Recital Starling. This card was limited earlier this year in response to the Lyrilisk Tri Brigade or Bird Up deck. The card being a soft once per turn allows easy extension and allows for the deck to easily make an early Utopic Draco Future as an Omni Negate to insulate their combo. Despite this, I think that removing the Samorg Link 3 was probably the most impactful hit to the deck. The deck was so capable of making the early Utopic Draco Future by using a different Lyrilisk monster as the other material. So I think that while this will allow the Bird Up deck even more easily to extend their plays, I do not think that this will have a large impact in the overall meta. This is probably fine. Your unlimited cards are Teller Knight Ptolemaeus, Dimensional Fissure, Fire Formation Tenki, Macrocosmos, and Metaverse. Fire Formation Tenki will serve a similar role to Recital Starling. It was limited for the same reason, and I think its unlimit will have roughly the same impact. It will add a small amount of consistency to what was already still a very consistent deck and a very consistent engine. Teller Knight Ptolemaeus is much more interesting to me. This card was initially banned for allowing rank four spam decks, namely Pendulum decks, to easily access Outer Entity Azathoth and Cyber Dragon Infinity. Azathoth has since been ban banned and Infinity has largely been power crept. I think that Ptolemaeus can certainly still have an impact on the meta, it will always give rank 4 decks an option for a different end board monster. Namely, it can currently allow decks like Exosister to make something like Satellar Knight Constellar Diamond. I am quite interested to see how this card gets utilized moving forward and seeing if it's okay to be off the list at all. Especially being the rare move from banned to unlimited. Which makes sense for an extra deck monster, but it's still not something we see often. Dimensional Fissure and Macrocosmos, I think, fill the same role. They allow decks to have more ways to slow down or stop the Ishizu tier deck. Most notably, Fluanderes seems to have the largest boost from these cards being at 3. To be honest though, I don't think that these cards will have a large impact in the current meta. Dimension Fissure is certainly the more impactful of the two in my opinion. It is playable as a going first or second option and can be main decked. Going first, it obviously is an incredibly powerful card that you can start your turn with to insulate yourself immediately. Going second, it can be played at the start of your turn to prevent your opponent from using your turn as essentially their main phase three. Macro is a bit harder to justify though. The card is certainly powerful going first, but going second, it's honestly pretty bad. It immediately makes it a sideboard option over a main deck inclusion. And in addition to that, the main deck you would play for in tier limit has an inherent way to stop the card with Rule Kalos. As it turns out, being able to summon Helios the Primordial Sun as part of this card's effect has been one of its biggest downfalls for over a decade now, and I hope it never changes. The last card is Metaverse. While I don't think that this card will have any measurable impact at three since it can no longer tutor out Mystic Mine, I am still quite interested to see what duelists come up with here. There are quite a few impactful field spells that can be played, such as Necro Valley or Secret Village of the Spellcasters. But at the end of the day, I don't really think that this card will break anything. Overall, I think that this list is far more interesting than many people give it credit for. While I can understand that many players want more meaningful hits to Ishizu tier, being that it's currently tier zero, I think that this is potentially the least toxic tier zero deck that Yu-Gi-Oh has ever had. Ishizu tier mirrors are incredibly back and forth. They have a ton of cool interactions and are above all, extremely skill intensive. And at the end of the day, these are all the things that we love about Yu-Gi-Oh and that we prize in good formats. Variety is great. And it certainly has its place in the overall scope of the Yu-Gi-Oh! metagame. But for the next couple of months at least, this will be the format that we live in. With YCS pass with YCS season largely over, and no new sets set to be released until Photon Hypernova in mid-February, love it or hate it, this is the format that we have for the next couple of months. Thank you all so much for watching or listening. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to go ahead and subscribe. It takes just a second to click the button and it is the freest and fastest way to show your support for us. Thanks again and have a great week, everyone.